Choy. Friends, how many of you want God to visit you today? That's so good. How many of you have come for the first time? Raise your hand. Thank you. Welcome. 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 After the feast, please go to the lobby. We'll give you a welcome gift. Thank you so much for being here. This is your family now. I do not know where you come from. I do not know what you're going through. And maybe you're, you've had some, I don't maybe a family member is sick or, or you're going through some marriage problems or, or, you know, some problems in the office or some financial problems. But I want to make a declaration today. God is enough for you. God is enough for your problem. God is enough for your situation. God is enough. And that's the reason why we're here. And today I want you to pray with me our favorite prayer. Are you ready to be blessed? Our favorite prayer at the feast. Let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want you to read for me Deuteronomy 29 verse 9. Uh, by, by the way, how many of you want to prosper? All right. This verse will tell you how. Read with me. Therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Do the covenant. Do what's written in the covenant. And the core of the covenant is nothing else but love. The core of this Bible is nothing else but love. Love, love, love. That's what life is all about. If you want to prosper, you've got to be a person of love. Money, mansions, that's not what will make you rich. What will make you rich is love. Do you have love in your life? Is love the reason why you wake up in the morning? Is love the reason why you breathe and talk and eat and walk and dream and think and sing and dance? Is love the purpose of your life? Is love the essence of who you are? Is love the motive of everything that you do? If love is the purpose of your life, you are the richest person in this universe. Really? In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Can I give you an example of how love can prosper you? May I? I am an entrepreneur. And I love my customers. I really do. I pray for them every day. No joke. Oh, first I pray for you. In my ministry, I pray for every person attending the feast. You know, I raise up my hand like this in my office every day. I pray for each one of you. I pray, Lord, bless them and meet their needs and give them abundance and give them the healing that they need and give them miracles. You know, just on and on, on and on. I pray for you every day. And then... And then I, I pray for my customers. Now, Lord, I pray for each one of them. And I, so, so if you attend the feast and you're also my customer, I, I pray for you twice a day. I pray for you twice a day. And I love doing that. I love doing that. And you know what? 
I genuinely love my customers. Because I love my customers, I try to serve them more. I try to make them happy. I try to meet their deepest needs. You know, I fail sometimes. I apologize. I tell them, can I try again? You know, I, I want to be their friend. Now, here's my question. Do you think my customers will love me back? You bet. And you know, when a competitor will come in, offer the same service that I'm giving at a lower price, what do you think? Will, will, will my customers leave me? No. 90% will stay and say, thank you, but no thank you, because Bo loves me and I love Bo. Love can prosper you. <laughs> Believe me. Love your staff, love your customer, be the most loving person in the world. You know, you, every morning you tell yourself, I'm going to love someone today. You know, before I enter the stage, I, I, just, I just said, Lord, I, I love these people and, and bless me so I can bless them. And, you know, it's all about love. And then prosperity will follow. Prosperity will follow. Just be open to that prosperity and it will come. Yes? Amen? Come on, let's, let's, let's put your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Jesus, train me to love. Teach me how to love more. Fill my heart with overflowing love. And let prosperity overflow as well. In Jesus' name. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto Somebody beside you, tell that person God will speak to you today. How many of you want to become financially healthy? Can you just check with the person beside you? Look at that person and see and evaluate if that person is financially healthy. You, you can no, right? It's difficult. Even if you look at his wallet and, and there's a bunch of money there, you still don't know. It's the same thing with physical health. Can you see, look at the person beside you again, and is that person physically healthy? You don't know. You, you don't. You don't know what's happening. You know, my, my, my health mentor always tells that to me. Cancer doesn't appear just like that. Cancer takes 20 years. It, 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 you know, cancer is there and then it slowly builds up. And if, you, if, you don't, if you don't stop it, you know, it will continue to grow. You, you've got to learn. It's the same thing. You, you don't know. You, know you, you could be strong and nice and wonderful and, and healthy on the outside, but you're sick on the inside. Well, I'm, I'm, can, I, can I shock you a bit? Um, Sickness, what causes sickness? What, what causes disease? Germs? Virus? Bacteria? Hold the hand of somebody beside you. Hold the hand. Clutch it. Good. Let me give you a fact. Ask me what? While you're holding that hand, let me tell you this fact. That hand that you're holding now is overwhelmingly filled and overflowing with an abundance of disease-causing infectious germs, bacteria, and virus. I mean, I'm not joking. I'm not pulling your leg. But why are you healthy? Why are you healthy? Why? You're touching all that. But you're healthy. Why? Your immune system is strong. Everybody say that, immune system. Your immune system can kick butt, you know? Bacteria, be gone. I'm, 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 I'm strong, immune system. Well, guess what? Brother Bo, what, what causes a weak immune system? So yes, immune system, a weak immune system. What causes disease? Not germs. Germs are everywhere. What causes disease? Weak immune system. You got me. Now, Brother Bo, what causes a weak immune system? Three things. 
Three things. Number one, toxin. Say toxin. Number two, malnourishment. Number three, imbalance. Do you know what causes financial sickness? Ask me what? Not external events, but weak immune system of your finances. When you have a weak financial immune system, that's what causes financial trouble. No, you, you, you know, Brother Bo, I'm, I'm in financial trouble because I lost my job or my business went down or a relative borrowed all my money and hasn't been paying me or a house got burned or I got sick and I wasn't able to work. You know, all of those things, they didn't cause your financial trouble because if you had a strong financial immune system, you could have been able to withstand all those external events. Are you getting, are you getting what I'm saying? You say, ah... One more time. Ah, okay. I, I hope you mean it. You know. I hope you mean it. And but but that's exactly why we get into financial sickness because our financial immune system is weak. And the reason why it's weak is also because of toxin, malnourishment, and imbalance. Ask me how. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, the three causes of a weak financial immune system. Number one, financial toxins. Shout it out. This is why we get into financial sickness. This is the reason why many people have financial cancer. This is the reason why many people are financially dying. Number one, because of financial toxins. What in the world is financial toxin? Ask me what? Toxic debt. Everybody say that again. Ah. Toxic debt. I'm going to ask this in Tagalog. Ilan sa inyo ang may utang? Do you want to become rich? Then you've got to get rid of toxic debt. Not all debt is created equal. Some are badder than others. Some are good. But even, even business debt is supposed to be good. But you, you, need, you need to be careful because you can borrow more than what you can earn from the company. And, and you know, borrowing money to buy a house is supposed to be good. But be careful that you don't buy a too big a house with too big a debt that you'll not be able to pay every month. Are you listening to me? And especially consumer debt. That is bad debt. That is toxic debt. When you borrow money to buy clothes or buy appliances or buy stuff, that is toxic debt. Tell somebody beside you, poke that person really, really hard and tell that person in Tagalog so that he understands wag ka nang manguta. Man, do you want to become rich? Raise your hand if you do. Then you've got to detoxify. You've got to remove toxic debt. You know, the crazy problems we have in this world, I get phone calls in my cell phone and in my landline. I don't know why they know my number. Offering me, do you want to borrow? You know, we give you a credit line. Borrow this, borrow that. But I said, no, I don't need. I don't need your debt. I don't need toxins in my life. Because I've made a decision to live within my means. And listen, it is very important. There, there is a... Here's, here's number one rule of the rich. The number one rule of the rich is this. Are you listening? Say, I'm listening. What you spend should be less than what you earn. Tell somebody beside you, what you spend should be less than what you spend. You know what? This principle, you can apply it to an individual. You, you can apply it to a company. You can apply it to a country. And, and, and if they violate this number one rule, if they violate it, this rule will kill them. Will kill them. You know, in the, in the 2007, 2008 financial crisis, economists will try to explain that, explain that in very sophisticated language. Words that we don't even understand. But I will explain to you the crisis of 2008. 
Do you know why America went down? Do you know why Europe went down? I'll explain it in six words. They spent more than they earned. That's it. It works in individuals and companies and nations. You want, say it out with me again. What I spend should be less than what I earn. That's the key. Last Sunday, I talked about filthy rich people. Yes? Today, I'll talk about another creature called the filthy poor. Sometimes we look at our neighbors and sometimes we look at our office mates and sometimes we look at our friends and we say, wow, he's rich. Actually, all of that was borrowed. <laughs> Credit cards and, you know, and everything that he has is borrowed. He's not filthy rich, he's filthy poor. Filthy poor and filthy rich people are the same. They're miserable. The filthy rich are destroyed by the money they possess. The filthy poor are destroyed by the money they want to possess. And there are people who cannot go out of the house unless everything is designer stuff. Have you noticed? There are people, they can't go out of the house unless their shirt is designer, is a designer shirt, and the pants, and the shoes, and the socks, and the shades, and, and the watch, and the underwear has to be designer underwear. I mean, you know what? You can buy designer underwear. But if you have the money, and if you've got the millions, but, but if you have to borrow money to buy the underwear, there's something wrong. Am I, am, I, am, I, am I connecting this with you? Are you receiving this? You, you can't do that. I mean, there are people who cannot wear a shirt unless there's a crocodile on the chest. They, they cannot go out of the house. Now look, there's nothing wrong with buying that shirt. If you have the money, if you've got the millions, and you're getting just a little bit, but no, there are people who borrow. My gosh, to buy the crocodile. What's wrong with a frog? Where a frog? What's wrong with a... I think, you know, when I look at my, my life, we've been married for 14 years, and my wife and I, we, we decided we're going to have romantic dates once a week. And uh, we had very little money then, very little money. But we still went out on dates. Jollibee may not be a very romantic place, but that, that became very romantic to us. We would stand in line, you know, ordering our food in the, in the menu, and we would hold hands. Romantic. <laughs> we could not, you know, we even had to select. I remember, I remember distinctly, we would, we would select the cheaper items of the menu because that's what all we could afford. But we had fun. We didn't borrow money so that we could start eating in expensive restaurants. We do that today, but before we were patient. And that's a key word. Everybody say patience. That's it. You know, there, there was a time when we had no money. So what was our date? Walking under the starlit sky, holding hands, whispering sweet nothings to one another, eating peanuts. That was our date. And, and, and we were happy. There was one time we ate dinner at, at home. After eating dinner at home, we dressed up really well. Long sleeves, you know, cold pants. And we, 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 we my, my wife wore one nice, nice clothes. And, and then we, we went to a five-star hotel. We entered with confidence. We sat in the lobby. We enjoyed the music. And I had to learn the art of looking straight at the waitress with confidence, be able to say, Coke, please. <laughs> with the conviction of a multimillionaire, you know? And, and then she came back and, and, and that was the most expensive Coke I've ever ordered. <laughs> and I, I took a sip and my wife took a sip. <laughs> it was, it was very sweet. And, you know, just one, just one. And then the waitress came with free peanuts. I didn't know that. <laughs> and every so often, refill, please. <laughs> you know? 
I, I don't think she, you know, they, she didn't know. She was serving other people, so she didn't know that I ordered only one Coke. Two hours, enjoying the violin music and, oh, we, we, had, we, we enjoyed our time. That we, we were not in a hurry. You know, you, 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 you're happy the way you are, and, and, but you know that time will come. And, and so now, sweet reward, we can go into any five-star hotel and we, we, we don't have to eat the free peanuts anymore. We can order food. Sometimes we check in. <laughs> and we, we just had, you know, but that, that's my point. To, can you tell somebody beside you, Dada ting rin yun. Don't, just, just be patient. Just, just be patient. Don't, don't be in a hurry to, to enjoy the lifestyle of the rich. If you, and then you have to borrow? Don't do that. Don't do that because that's going to destroy you. So number one is financial toxins and the antidote is rule number one of the rich. What you spend should be less than what you earn. Number two, malnutrition. Everybody say that with me, please. Say the word malnourished. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of the word malnourished? What's the image? Yeah, most of us would think of kids in Africa that look like toothpicks. But here's the truth. Here's the truth. In this room, there are people who are malnourished and they are overweight. That's a fact. The reason why they're overweight or they look normal yet malnourished is because they have toxic bloat. They have eaten. The reason, you know, toxins are not germs. No, toxins are man-made chemicals from processed food, truckloads of processed food that you've been eating all these years, plus buckets of synthetic medicines that you've been ingesting through these years. There is toxins all over your body. That's why you need to detoxify. And, and, but, but listen, the reason why you get overweight is because of the fake food that you've been eating. In the same way, in the area of your finances, there are people who look rich, but they're not. They're malnourished in their finances. They have money. They've got money in the bank. And they think they are rich. No! Ask me why. Here's the second rule of the rich. What's the first rule? What you spend should be less than what you earn. Rule number two of the rich is what you save should grow more than what you lose. Because your money shrinks. Everybody say, my money is shrinking. People are happy. They put their money in the bank. 1% a year grows and they think they're happy. But there's inflation. Your money is shrinking by 4 to 7% a year. And so if you put your money in the bank after one year, it grew by 1%, but it lost 4 to 7%. Are you here? Are you with me? And so the bank is wonderful to entrepreneurs like me. The bank is wonderful for your emergency fund. But do not, do not, do not put your long-term savings in the bank. Because it shrinks. It shrinks. It becomes malnourished. What do you need to do? Get that long-term savings and put it in. Put it in business. Put it in real estate. Put it in paper assets. And my favorite money multiplier is this. Buying small parts of gigantic companies. Small parts of gigantic companies. That for me is my favorite money multiplier. And you can do that through the stock market. And you know, when, when, when I say the word, why don't you invest in the stock market? Oh, Bo, I got burned already. Oh, brother Bo, my office mate lost all his money in the stock market. Oh, brother Bo, my uncle lost everything in the stock market. You know, that's true. 85% of people who put their money in the stock market lose their money because they don't follow my rules. My rules will keep you safe and will make you a multimillionaire. My rule, many, I've got a few rules, but one of them is that you don't buy any company in the stock market. There are 250 plus of them there. No, you only buy the gigantic ones. Like I bought Miralco, you know, recently. And so I, 
When I pass the road now and I see those electric posts, I own some of those electric <laughs> posts. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. When, when you get, when you, when you partner with these big gigantic companies, you're buying a part. I taught my helpers, I, I, years ago I told them to, in, to buy Schumart. And so I told them, you know, when, when you go into Schumart now, and the guard there, with that magic stick. You know, that, that stick is awesome. That stick is awesome. You go in there with your bag, and then he just puts it inside your bag. He knows what's inside. He doesn't look at the bag no more. It's, it's phenomenal. He needs to win a Nobel Prize in science or something. Sometimes, you know, he just puts it beside your bag. Anyway, I, I, I'm going out of the topic. But... I told my helpers, if you pass through the, the door of Schumart and the guard is snooty to you, you just look him in the eye and you say, I'm a part owner of Schumart. And then walk away, you know? You, you, but it's true. You can say that post over there, that's, you know, those five tiles, that's mine, you know? And my, my driver, he didn't want to invest in the stock market. You know, he's got four kids. You know, brother, brother Bo, you know, Wagmuna, he was afraid. My helpers were already investing in the stock market. My, my, my driver didn't want to. After one year, he comes up to me and he says, uh, okay, okay. You know? And so he starts investing in the stock market and, and he begins to realize what he lost, you know, because, because, he started listening to my helpers. They already have 60,000 and 80,000 and 120,000. And, and he was there starting, starting with his 1,000 and 2,000 every month. And later on, when he saw getting bigger and he, he started putting 3,000. Today, he has 116,000 pesos already. My driver, you know, and he's so happy. He's so happy. And I, I always tell people, you know, you just, you just have to make that decision and, and make that decision that what, what you save should grow more than what you lose. Yes? Yes? Brother Bo, I don't know anything about the stock market. Look, there's a book table outside that door. And then there are a few books there, five of them. Financial books written by a really nice guy. <laughs> you know, really nice. Some say he's good looking, but you know, just forget that. You know, it's the content that matters. The, the Eight Secrets of the Truly Rich, one book. The Eight Habits of the Happy Millionaire, another book. Prosper, another book. My Maids Invest in the Stock Market, another book. The Turtle Always Wins, another book. Five books. You don't know anything about the stock market? If my maids can do it, my maid, who I promoted to bookkeeper, has 508,000 pesos in her stock portfolio. In three to four years, she will be a millionaire. This thing works. And if you will not be a multimillionaire in 10 to 20 years, it will be your fault. Because you heard me say it to you now that anyone can do it. If my maids can do it, you can do it. You got what I'm saying? Yes. But I want to turn this into a positive note that my hallucination, my belief, my faith says that 10 to 20 years from now, this whole PICC will be filled to the rafters with multimillionaires. Elbow someone beside you and say, hello, multi-millionaire. <laughs> Get used to it. Get used to it. It will be your fault. You make choices in your life and you create your destiny. You choose what you want to happen with your life. Study. You don't know anything about it? Study. Number one, toxins. Antidote for toxins, what you spend should be less than what you earn. Number two, malnourishment. Antidote to malnourishment. What you save should grow more than what you lose. Here's number three, imbalance. 
Modern medicine is 100 years old. Traditional Chinese medicine, 4,000 years old. And according to traditional Chinese medicine, you get sick because of imbalance. Yin and the yang. For example, rest and work. Too much work, you get sick. Too much rest, you get sick. No, it's got to be balanced. Rest and work. Same thing with heat and cold. Too much cold, you get sick. Too much heat, you get sick. It's got to be balanced. Same thing with in the area of money. What you earn should be equal with what you know. What you earn should be equal with what you know. And in my life, many times, I've failed, I've lost money, I've fallen flat on my face, bloody nose in business, you know, bleeding jaw, you know, my face splattered on the ground, totally embarrassed, humiliated because of a business failure. And I'll, I'll ask myself, why did, why, why did I fail? It's because I tried to do something that was beyond my knowledge. I was in a hurry. I was impatient. I acted with pride. Every time I act with pride, I fail. Ask me why. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 18, pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. If you fall, look back. You'll see pride. You acted in pride. Do you hear me? I'm an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur takes risks. If you do not want to take risks, you cannot become an entrepreneur. However, there are two kinds of risks, reasonable and unreasonable. You only take the reasonable ones. How? Ask me how. An entrepreneur always lowers his risk. Always. How? Ask me. You raise up your wisdom. The moment you raise your wisdom, you lower your risk. If you have low wisdom, the risk is very high. And so, to have balance, you only earn what you earn should be equal to what you know. Am I making sense to you? Can we all stand? This past week, I noticed there were a lot of people asking money for me. And, and, and that's kind of like normal for me with my position, you know, being the leader and a lot of people. Uh, friends who, who had businesses and they, they, they needed infusion of money because you know, cash flow was very tight and there were some people who, who had, you know, kids in the hospital and I try to give what I can, but it's, it's you know, there were, there's just too much. Nuns would come to me, Brother Bo, you know, we need money, we're, we're putting up an orphanage and, uh, and I try to give a little, a bishop came to me, Brother Bo, we're, we're building a church, you know, can you help us? And okay, bishop and whoo, sometimes it's just overwhelming. A woman came to me last week, needed money for food. She had no food for her kids. I, my heart broke out. And then I told my wife, you know, sweetheart, I'm just thankful to God. So thankful. Because sometimes you, know, you, you get overwhelmed by all the need and then you, you, you feel so heavy. But, but I said, no, 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 I shouldn't feel heavy. I should thank God that I'm in the giving end and not in the receiving end. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? That, that I'm in the giving and not in the needing. Are you tired, sick and tired of being in the receiving end? Would you want to shift to the giving end? You cannot help a financially sick person if you yourself are financially sick. And I'm asking you, make a shift. Make a decision now to become so financially healthy that you'll bless people. Are you ready? Make that shift. Lift up your hands. 
Say this after me. Father, I ask you, fill my life with love. So much love. Because this is what will make me fulfilled and happy and rich. Father, give me abundance. I want you in my life. More of you. More of you. Father, in Jesus' name, 